you know, pack film was always my, my favorite medium. You know, that you have to peel it apart, that you're much closer to the chemistry, that you smell it. The perfect combination of something very, very analog and something very simple and, you know, right in your hands right away. What do you think of when you think of Polaroid? It's probably this, a great square frame, a little space on the bottom to write something stupid or extremely smart. An image with dreamy characteristics that slowly fades up into existence before your eyes. It's called an integral photo, with all the components of the development process integrated into the film unit. But before there was this, there was this. Oh, oh yeah. A kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. No analog medium has to die anymore after, you know, this incredible comeback of Fuji Instax, of, you know, the success story of Polaroid. Then suddenly they say they're gonna stop pack film and I couldn't believe that because I said, hey guys, you know, haven't you learned the lesson? There is a new generation of this pack film and like with Polaroid, we want to, to build a new customer base and a new awareness um, to Winston film. We want to build a future rather than to just keep a dinosaur alive. And this is very important. This magic is called Peel Apart Film, AKA Pack Film, produced by Polaroid from 1963 to 2008, revered for its vivid tonality, crisp image rendition, and wide variety. While it wasn't the first Polaroid film ever released, that honor goes to the Polaroid roll films, it was the significant leap forward toward Polaroid founder Edwin Land's goal of true one-step photography. Making the instantaneous image itself without liquids, take a wallet and perhaps open the wallet, press a button, close the wallet, and have the picture. Along with its abundant use by hobbyists, it was also a key tool for cinematographers and photographers in testing lighting on sets, resulting in an incredible array of amazing captures on this format. Not to mention being a popular artistic tool used by folks such as Andy Warhol and Ansel Adams, somewhat well-known individuals. It was those artists and many more who kept pushing the medium forward. Ansel Adams himself, was key in driving Polaroid toward larger formats and film like Type 55, which produced both a positive instant print and a large negative, which could be blown up to dummy big sizes. Though Integral Film eventually became the crown jewel of instant film formats, the thing that everybody associates with the name Polaroid, Pack Film was actually produced all the way up through the end of the company's original life and established a diehard following. You thought you had a tough time deciding between 600 and SX70 film? Try having to decide between 669, 665, 672, 84, 89, 52, 55, 809, 803, square film, standard film, 4x5, 8x10. This was an absolutely gobsmacking sea of film that all went away when Polaroid went full Hindenburg and dropped out of the sky. Not to mention the cameras. Oh, these cameras. While Polaroid produced a fair share of plastic doinkos, there were far more high-end cameras produced for this format than Integral Film. Cameras with three-element glass lenses, leaf shutters, Zeiss viewfinders, multiple lenses for capturing more than one image per sheet. Beautiful bellowed wonders that were under serious threat of being completely obsolete if the film was gone. Back in the 2008, um I already, I also wanted to save the, the back film machines. We, we succeeded on the 8x10 systems, but we never had a chance uh, regarding uh, the production of back film because Fuji uh, right away uh, secured uh, all, the, all this back film. Fuji, the producer of Instax film, had their own thing going since 1984. Fully compatible films with Polaroid cameras, Really, really, really amazing films. FP100C, 100B, 400B, 3000B, and 500B in the 4x5 format. This was a lifesaver for pack film shooters. After Polaroid bit the bullet, Fuji came bum rushing into the US market and the amazing stuff was readily available to stitch together the broken hearts of Polaroid shooters everywhere. Until they took a seam ripper and 
tore those stitches right off, announcing seven years later that PacFilm was donezo, forcing aftermarket prices for the last surviving stocks of film to shoot up from $12 a pack to over $75, which sucks. <laughs> and with the last remaining packs expiring as recently as 2019, and with a solid shelf life, those final batches still do produce some wicked magic. And after shooting a bunch of FP100C, I recently shot some 3000B around the house with my family, and we just had a blast with this stuff. 3000B is 3200 ISO film. That means the film is so light sensitive that you can shoot with it at night with no flash and get stunning results. That film is the equivalent of Polaroid Type 47 or the various other high speed pack films that Polaroid used to produce. Which for a time, these were the fastest films available in all of consumer photography. Polaroid, producing groundbreaking stuff. It used to be the norm. Even to this day, you can still use expired Polaroid pack film. Unlike Integro film, these suckers last much longer before becoming unusable. Results vary dramatically, and you have to take great caution in who you're buying from, how it was stored, and what the expiration date is. But using these old stocks has become a niche unto itself in the Polaroid community. Word to the wise though, the chemistry smells really bad. Like, destroys a room bad. Oh, it smells insane. Oh, Okay, so now what? Fuji's pack film's gone, Polaroid's is long gone. Well, Florian Caps, Doc, the man who saved Polaroid Integral Film with the Impossible Project, decided he wasn't just like done doing heroic stuff for the medium. Enter his new venture, SuperSense. Together with his production manager, Chris Holmquist, they undertook another task deemed manifestly impossible and decided to go ahead and save pack film with their product, one instant. From a user standpoint, you know, with the Fuji or the Polaroid, you just kind of put it in the back of the camera and shut the door, and then you have these little tabs you can pull out. With ours, you have to thread this one main tab through the uh, rollers, and that's, in the beginning, the only fundamental sort of mechanical difference. Obviously, the materials are very different. We're getting to use like the old Polaroid legacy materials. So we're using a material called P7. The one instant pack film type 100 P7 color is something of a salvage mission. Over in Boston, a place called 20 by 24 studio had procured a large quantity of raw materials from Polaroid, the original company in their final days. They use this for their 20 by 24 camera, but also supply it to other ventures like SuperSense, which is using chemistry and materials from original stock 20 by 24 Polacolor film to hand make each pack of one instant P7. It is nuts that they're doing this and it's awesome. This is the same chemistry that one might find in a pack of Polaroid 669. The t-shirt you're wearing. So I think it was only used in this, yeah. <laughs> this pack film, yes. So in a weird way, one instant P7 is like still shooting original Polaroid film. Some of the last to make it into consumer's hands. Oh, I mean it's, it really makes you want to support them, doesn't it? I really love the P7 film. It comes in this beautiful handmade packaging. The one-shot holders are great for storing the drying film. The film itself has this painterly quality to it. Colors somehow simultaneously bold and desaturated. A beautiful texture to the whole thing. And these interesting spread patterns that provide a raw chemical frame to the image, never letting you forget the magic that made the shot possible. Shooting with pack film is a very intimate experience. We always talk about the social element of Polaroids, taking a picture, watching it come to life next to your friends, your family, your sworn enemies, everyone coming together to witness what is basically a real magic trick. None of that fake magic shit I saw on a Caribbean cruise in 2016. But peel apart film almost takes it a step further. The reveal is so satisfying. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh. I love seeing people's reactions as they slowly start seeing the wonder on that positive sheet. And every time you see the result, it makes everyone even angrier that Fuji pulled the rug out. You gotta explain that every time, sort of taking through the history of it, then they get pissed and you're pissed. And it makes me twice as thankful that Chris, Doc, and the whole One Instant team are fighting the good fight to supply this stuff for years to come. And that, folks, is big for business. That's right. I said it. I said I had to say it, really. 
Now, there's a lot of talk about the cost of one instant film. Every individual film unit costs 10 euros, and that can really quickly throw people into a tizzy. They're just like, all right, well, for that reason, I'm out, kind of like Shark Tank. But consider the demand of producing every single one-shot pack made by hand using valuable chemicals, taking 10 minutes to manually produce per shot. It's hard work. And naturally, that labor and those materials ain't gonna be cheap, folks. And I mean, I don't think I'm telling tales out of school if I say, we know our product is expensive, but the truth is it's almost not expensive enough for how much hand labor is put into it. So I guess maybe there are people out there that think we're sort of gouging or something, but the truth is we're almost doing the opposite. There's also the reality that pack film is in many ways a niche of a niche of a niche a subset of film photography within the smaller instant film industries. And that's why Doc and Chris are happy to not be burdened by the gigantic machines that Doc experienced after taking over the Polaroid factory in the Netherlands. I spent so much money, time and energy in, in you know, rescuing this, this Polaroid factory and I had fixed costs of whatever, 70,000 euro for electricity, even if the machines are not turned on. So this was always my dream come true that, you know, we have a manufactory where, you know, we can start, um, you know, producing our own materials, own formats, play with it uh, and, and build a complete new market, which is, is small, independent, but also flexible. And, uh, you know, a lot of things can happen. They're keeping this format alive and doing so sustainably. It might not be cheap, but every incremental success can ultimately get them to larger pack sizes, lower costs, finding new chemical options. And like Agent Mulder, you just gotta believe. And personally, I don't think there's anyone I'd rather put my full trust in than a guy like Doc. He's done it before. Who's to say he won't do it again? If you bet against the man, you're probably gonna lose your bet. The next episode of In An Instant will feature my full interview with Florian Capps and Chris Holmquist. So stay tuned for that. And most definitely stay tuned for more Peel Apart content because this hits different. Am I sad that I'm not, you know, CEO or CSO or president of the honorary, honoris causa or whatever of Polaroid? Yes, yeah, sometimes I am. But on the other hand, sitting here with Chris and you and, you know, looking our, at our handmade crazy films, uh, this is the best situation I've ever been in. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and peel apart that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, tips, shoots, peels, and all things instant. Bye.